fastball. <laughs> Defect for sure. That's on video. And let's freeze. The gentleman at the baseline is Brian. Standing at six foot four, he had a career in professional baseball as a third baseman, but due to a career ending injury, he had to pick up a different sport. Tennis. Enter Christian. At six foot three, he is the number one singles player for a nationally qualifying Division Three team in the area. He is one of the cleanest ball strikers in the game, and recently became a Yonix ambassador. And in all honesty, I think I'm gonna buy a few frames from him. Last few. Enter me. My technique is actually extremely inefficient. Maybe my backhand is decent, but that's really all I have besides my footwork. Now you're asking yourself, what is someone like this who's five foot eight and kind of a tennis burnout doing with these monstrously successful athletes? Well, I want to talk about that today. I would argue I'm the worst ball striker on this tennis court, and I'm perfectly okay with that. I was still having a really good time though. This sun-kissed summer night hovering at about 66 degrees on an early September in the Midwest is actually the reason why I still play tennis on an almost daily basis all the way in 2020. I was extremely insecure in high school. I wouldn't ever be on the tennis court with these guys because they'd be the type to take my high school crush and make out with them in third period on the second floor while I did their homework because I wanted to feel accepted. But my blanket of security during those high school weird awkward times was forgetting about everything that happened in high school and even in my house and just playing tennis under the lights with friends that I just enjoyed spending time with. That is the origin to the spiritual successor of what you guys are seeing today on the tennis court. Similar to how Denis Shapovalov was the origin to Novak Djokovic being disqualified in 2020. World ousted from the U.S. Open. Novak Djokovic hit a ball out of anger from the court, frustrated after losing a point to Spain's Pablo Carreño Busta. Let's start with the Solinko Tour Bite. Coming in at just under $160 per reel and $12 per packet. This four-sided cold polyester should sound pretty familiar to some of my other string reviews I had in this channel. Funny enough, there are Solinko as well. The ball pocketing and feel for this tennis string for volleys and serves were fantastic. It was muted enough and comfortable enough four volleys that if I had a slight reaction miss hit up at the net, it still would go in the same direction I would expect it to. As for the serves, I was confident enough to swing out on my flat serves to add an extra five to 10 miles per hour. And for my slice and my kickers, it gave just enough extra spin to either jam my opponent in the body, leaving for a short ball, or kicking out wide enough from them to have a service return error. The spin was extraordinary. In one word, I would actually say it's legendary. I have never played with a string with this much spin potential. I would actually argue you should try this string just to see the spin potential alone. This, however, is not a perfect string at all. There are some major flaws. The power on the string was absolutely lacking. On top of that, this is the most uncomfortable string I have ever used in my life. I started to develop arm and wrist problems about 30 minutes into my playtest. I thought that it was just some getting used to, 
but even after two and a half hours of playing with this Linko Torbite, it actually got worse. I had to cut this play test short because I actually feared for my health and safety of my right forearm. The Selenko Torbite Soft copies everything from its vanilla version except for one key difference. After a two and a half hour break in period, this string felt playable. It had all the spin potential and all the damp feel at the net and the confidence on serves that its vanilla version has. But it actually felt comfortable to play with from the baseline after about two or two and a half hours. This is kind of weird because yes, all polyesters do have a break-in period, I will say, but my string of choice, the Silenco Confidential, has a break-in period of only about 10 to maybe 30 minutes. If you ever had any arm or wrist problems, I personally would stay away from this string. These are not comfortable strings at all. And you could feel free to disagree with me. One of my friends I was doing this playtest with using my racket and the Selenko Tour Bite, loved it. He's actually thinking about switching to not only my racket, but also using the Selenko Tour Bite as a full bed string for his frame. He actually coined the term Selenko Simp that I'll be posting on Instagram shortly. So be on the lookout for that because in all honesty, Selenko is a great string company. Although this is definitely not my favorite tennis string that I've done on this channel, I give it absolute respect. Without the Selenko Tour Bite or the Tour Bite Soft, we would not have two of the best tennis strings on the market today, the Selenko Hyper-G and the Selenko Confidential. Pay tribute to this, and if you've ever hit with either of those strings, I would suggest buy a packet of this if you have $12 laying around and see where its origins truly came from. And the spin potential is, again, legend dairy. As always, if you like this video, click like, hit subscribe if you want to get notified for these weekly tennis string reviews. And as always, happy hitting. Oh, by the way, I did get your results. The next string that I will be reviewing is the Technifiber Razor Code. If you want to vote on the very next string you'd like me to review right after the Technifiber Razor Code, follow me on Instagram. I poll about once a week for the very next tennis string. See you guys.